So other than the practice test, this is the end of section, chapter four, and it's gonna help us do square roots with negative numbers. Um, this is make-belief math because there's no real number that I can think of that when you square it, you get negative one. I, the imaginary number, I standing for imaginary number, was created so that when you square it, you get a negative which means the square root of a negative one is i, because the square root of negative one, it asks the question, what number squared equals to negative one? And generally, when you square any number, any real number that is, you get a positive. And so we would say there's no solution to this because the numbers that I know, when you square a negative, you get a positive. But because I squared is negative one, it's the answer to what the square root of negative one is. Eyes are important. Um, if you're driving around as a passenger in a car, uh, texting or working on your phone, uh, the code that tells your cell phone to switch over from one uh, cell tower to another, it has I in the code. Um, if you're like a neuroscientist and you're trying to do a map of a brain um, and you're trying to map how the neurons fire in the brain, eyes will be in that computation, uh, the code for that. So eyes come up a lot in, in higher science. Um, so they're important, so they're worth studying. Um, what we're gonna do is very trivial and what, well, might not seem trivial, but compared to um, what you can do with eyes, it's, it's you know, not even scraping the surface. So, um, I has a property when you square it, you get negative one, and I allows us to take square roots of negative numbers. Basically, the rules for algebra with eyes is identical to algebra with x's. If you can do algebra with x's, you can do algebra with eyes. The only, only difference in the world is if you have an x squared, you have to leave it x squared. If you get a y squared, you can put a negative one. And I showed you, five i times six i, these are multiplying two monomials, for lack of a better word. So I'd multiply the five and the six and get 30. I'd multiply the i and the i and get i squared. Just like if you're multiplying five x and six x, you'd multiply the five and six and get 30. You'd add the exponents on the x's and get x squared. The difference with i's is I could go the one extra step. 30x squared would be an answer to 5x times 6x. 30i squared is not an answer of 5i times 6i because i squared can be replaced with a negative one. So 30i squared is the same as 30 times negative one, which is negative 30. Similarly, negative 3i times positive 4i really is not remarkably different than negative 3x times positive 4x. Negative 3x times positive 4x, if I was to multiply it, I'd multiply negative 3 times 4 and get positive 12. I'd multiply x by x and get x squared. That would be all I can do with that problem. But the i version, negative 3i times 4i, I multiply the negative 3 times 4 and get negative 12. I multiply the i times i and get i squared. And with i's, I can go the further step and change the i squared to a negative one. So now instead of having, I have a mistake here, this should be negative 12x squared. Not that that mattered, but it was wrong. Um, for the i's, the i squared can be replaced with negative one. So I'd get negative 12 times negative one, which is 12. I can go the extra step that I can't go with x's. Similarly, if I had 2i squared, I can rewrite it as 2i times 2i, just like if I had 2x squared and I forgot the rules for reducing with um, exponents, I could rewrite that as 2x times 2x, multiply the 2s, multiply the x's and get 4x squared. 2i times 2i is the same as 2i squared. That's 4i squared, but i squared can be replaced with a negative one. So four i squared is four times negative one and that's equal to negative four. So now we're just gonna do a bunch of problems like this. First, five i times six i. For number two, I'm gonna multiply the five times six and get 30. I'm gonna multiply the i times i and get i squared. 
So 5i times 6i is 30i squared, but i squared can be replaced with negative 1, so 30 times i squared is the same as 30 times negative 1, and that would be equal to negative 30. For number 4, 2i times negative 3i, I multiply the 2 and the negative 3 and get negative 6. I multiply the i and the i and get i squared. So 2i times negative 3i is negative 6i squared. But i squared can be replaced with a negative 1. So negative 6i squared is the same as negative 6 times negative 1, which is positive 6. In problem 6, 10i times i can be written without a parenthesis, and to simplify it, I need to multiply the i's. 10i times i is 10i squared. i squared is negative 1, and so problem 6 reduces to negative 10. Problem 7 and 8 are basically similar. 7, negative 4i times i would simplify to negative 4i squared. And the i squared turns to negative 1. So negative 4i squared is going to be equal to positive 4. That's the first kind of level of what we need to be able to do with i's. Just multiply with i's. The next thing we need to be able to do is reduce square roots with i's. Let me teach you a trick that I probably shouldn't teach you, but I will. My calculator. In mode 1, it would be unable to do the square root of negative 20. Gives me an evil error. This calculator does so much. It's so awesome. If I hit my mode key and type the number 2, complex. Complex analysis is a field of math that deals with imaginary numbers. If I do mode and then 2... And now I do the square root of negative 20. Ta -da! My calculator knows what it equals to. It's 2 times the square root of 5 times i. How do I reduce square roots with negatives? Square roots with negatives turn into i's. The square root of negative 20, I'm going to make it the square root of positive 20 times i because the square root of a negative turns into an imaginary number. And now I'm just going to do a prime factor tree for 20 to reduce. The cruddy thing about mode 2, when I try to do a prime factor tree, I go 20 and equals, and then shift and quotes. My calculator won't do a prime factor tree in mode 2. I wish it would, but it won't. So I need to go back to mode in 1 if I want to do a prime factor tree. So then 20 equals shift quotes. Square root of 20 can be reduced because the prime factoring for 20 gives a 2 out in front of the radical and a 5 under the radical. So the square root of negative 20 reduces to 2 in front of the radical from the pair of 2s, 5 under the radical from the single 5, i out in front of the radical because of the negative. 9 and 10 are too nice. The square root of negative 25 is the same as the square root of 25 times i because the square root of a negative number is an imaginary number. And I know the square root of 25 without a prime factor tree. That's a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5. So if I'm in mode 2, I hate to bounce back and forth from modes, but if I'm in mode 2 and I entered the square root of negative 25, my calculator would tell me that it's 5i, just like I wrote. Can't do prime factor trees, but I can do square roots with negatives. Problem 12, to do the square root of negative 54, it's going to be the square root of positive 54 times i, mode 1, 54 equals shift quotes, actually degrees, minutes, seconds, but I call it quotes. It looks enough like quotes. I'm going to reduce. Did my prime factor tree for 54, made a group of 2. I'm going to get a 2 in front of my radical, a 3 in front of my radical from the singles. 
a 3 under my radical for the pairs. And now I'm going to get 6 square root of 3 times i. Put it back in mode 2 and do square root of negative 54. Exactly wrong. What did I do wrong? Is my prime factor tree 9 times? Oh, messed up. So I'm tired. I should have got a 3 out front and a 2 and a 3 under. I'm so happy I just checked that. What a... <clears throat> a pair of 3's, I get one of those out front. The singles stay under. Um, so my answer huh, was trumped by my calculator properly. Thank you, calculator. Just a careless mistake. Um, pairs go out front, singles stay under, and that's not what I chose to do. For problem 14, I get the square root of 15 times i, and 15 is not a reducible square root because it's prime factoring. It doesn't have any pairs. So if I do the square root of negative 15, I get rad 15 times i, or square root of 15 times i. These are nice. Um, 16. 5 times the square root of negative 49 is 5 times the square root of 49 times i. Square root of 49, I don't need my calculator for. Square root of 49, 7. So I get 5 times 7 times i. And that answer is going to be 35i. Let me try this. I'm in mode 2. 5 square root negative 49. 35i. Bang on. Let's do 17 because 18 is too low on my screen. For 17, 2 times the square root of negative 18 is 2 times the square root of positive 18 times i. Mode 1. 18 equals shift degrees minutes seconds. 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. I'm going to get a 3 out in front of my radical. That's going to get multiplied by the 2 that's already there. I'm going to get a 2 under my radical and still have that i. When I do this on my calculator, I'm crossing my fingers that I get 6 times the square root of 2 times i. So back to mode 2, 2 square root negative 18, 6 rad 2i, beautiful. Uh, 20, 8 square root of negative 30 is 8 times the square root of 30 times i. 30, the prime factoring is this, it's 6 times 5. So it's 2 times 3 times 5. There's no pairs in the prime factoring. 30 is not a reducible square root. That's as far as I can go. And if I do 8 square root of negative 30, I get 8 square root of 30 times i. For those of you that are fresh enough out of algebra to remember the quadratic formula, what we're going to do next is going to get us ready for the quadratic formula in chapter six. So I have an ugly square root fraction that I wanna reduce. And I'm gonna do orders of operations. I'm gonna treat the square root like it's a parentheses. So I wanna simplify this using orders of operations. Negative two plus the square root of two squared minus four times one times five all over 2 times 1. For those of you that remember this, negative b, different symbol but basically similar, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is the quadratic formula. That was the inspiration for this problem. It's setting us up for when we solve problems with the quadratic formula in chapter 6. Anyways, let me simplify this. I do the square root first because it's like a parenthesis. Under the square root first, I do the 2 squared, which is 4. Get minus 2 plus the square root of 4 
minus 4 times 1 times 5 over 2. And then under the radical, do the multiplication. 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. This will give me minus 2 plus the square root of 4 minus 20 over 2. Then do the subtraction. The subtraction gives me minus 2 or negative 2 plus the square root of negative 16 over 2. And the square root of negative 16 is the same as the square root of positive 16 times i, which is 4i. So this is negative 2 plus 4i over 2. And now I'm going to create two fractions implied by that big fraction. I'm going to make this 2 over 2. I dropped a negative sign from here to there. Let me get that negative sign back. Negative 2 over 2 plus 4i over 2. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. For the 4i over 2, I'm just going to cancel the 4 and the 2. I reduce that 4 over 2 and get a 2i which is exactly that. Let me show you on my calculator. On my calculator, fraction key, negative by the fraction 2 plus square root 2 squared. I didn't put it in a parentheses because 2 wasn't negative. 2 squared in, with or without a parentheses is 4. And then minus 4 times 1 times 5 all over 2 times 1. So that's the fraction that I want to reduce. And when I hit equals, get exactly that. Every problem in this section can be checked on our calculator. Problem 22 wants me to reduce. And I'm going to do the radical first because it's like an exponent. The square root of negative 81 is the square root of 81 times i. Oh, I snuck a 6 in the denominator. I can simplify the denominator separate from the numerator. It's kind of like in its own parentheses. Just instinctively did that without even thinking. The radical in the numerator reduces to 9 with the i. And now I'm going to create two fractions. My two fractions are going to be negative 6 over 6 plus 9i over 6. First fraction I reduce to negative 1. Second fraction I divide by 3, divide by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. i divided by 3 is 2. And I get 3i over 2. For some reason, that has to do with standard form of numbers that have i's my calculator is going to drag the i from the numerator of that fraction and write it off to the right. That's a better way to write it. That's kind of the standard way to write it. My calculator is so brilliant that if I entered this on my calculator, fraction negative 6 plus the square root of negative 81 over 2 times 3, negative 1 plus 3 halves i, exactly the same. So nice. So nice that I could check every problem. 24, I'm going to start reducing the radical. I'm going to make this negative 8 minus the square root of 98 times i, and I'm going to reduce that denominator again down to a 6. Go back to mode 1. Do a prime factoring for 98. Nine, 98 is 2 times 7 times 7. So the square root of 98, I get a 7 out front and a 2 under because of the pair of 7s. And now when we have i's, we create two fractions. The first fraction is going to be negative 8 over 6. Then I'm going to have a minus sign. And then 7 square root of 2 over 6 with an i technically in the numerator. I can't divide this 2 with the this, this 6. 
because the two is really two to the one half power. Square roots are the same as one half powers. And do, dividing those would be doing exponents, dividing before exponents. I can reduce that fraction by two. And my calculator is programmed to write the answer in the most desired form. It's gonna drag that I off to the right. Let me go back to mode two and enter this. Fraction negative eight minus square root of negative 98 over two parentheses three. Hopefully I get exactly this. Four thirds minus seven rad two I over six, perfect. The answers look so much more complicated than the algebra is. So let's work on number 26. 26, the square root of negative eight could be written as square root of eight times i. The denominator, the two times four, I can write as eight. So I don't have to take my calculator out of mode two. I'm gonna do a prime factor tree for eight, which is two times two times two. So the rad eight is gonna reduce to a two in front of the radical and eight after the radical in un a four or two under the radical. So I should get three minus two square root of two times i over eight. Make my two fractions that are implied by this, which is three over eight minus two square root of two i over eight. First fraction doesn't reduce. Second refraction, reduce, reduce, I get a one in the numerator in front of the radical, a four in the denominator. I'm gonna leave the minus sign. I'm not gonna write the one in the numerator. I'm gonna write my four in the denominator. I'm gonna drag my eye out so it's not under the, not in the numerator. Let's see what I can do. Fraction, negative three minus square root of negative eight over two times four. Negative three eighths minus rad two over four i. Let's do 27 together. 27, I don't even need my calculator. 27 is seven plus the square root of negative 100, which I could write as the square root of 100 times i. The denominator two times one is two. The square root of 100, I know that without my calculator, it's 10, it's a perfect square. And now I can make this seven over two plus 10 i over two. And the 10 i over two, I can reduce by two. Go 10 divided by two is five, two divided by two is one and get seven halves plus five i. Fraction seven plus square root negative 100 over two parentheses one. Perfect. Maybe like two more and then maybe we'll just cut it. Two, three maximum more. Um, let's do 29. So 29, I need to work under that radical. The denominator, I could make a two. First step under the radical is to do this four squared. That four squared is 16. Second step under the radical is to do this multiplication of four times five times one, that gives me a 20. I'm not gonna reduce till I make the two fractions. Now under the radical, 16 minus 20 is negative four. The square root of negative four is the square root of four 
times i, so it's just 2i. So this is going to give me negative 6 plus 2i over 2. Now I'll make my two fractions, negative 6 over 2 plus 2i over 2. First fraction reduces to negative 3. Second fraction, the 2's cancel, and I'm just left with an i. Let me make sure on this. Fraction negative 6 plus square root 4 squared minus 4 parentheses 5 parentheses 1 over 2 parentheses 1. Negative 3 plus i, beautiful. These are just tedious. I don't think they're particularly hard. Let's do 31 together. 31, I'm going to work under the radical first. Do the 5 squared. I'm going to leave the negative 4 in the minus in front of the radical. 5 squared is 25. In the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. Now under the radical, I get negative 26. So I'm going to get 4, I'm going to get negative 4 minus the square root of negative 26 over 2. Create my i to make the square root positive. This is minus 4, negative 4 minus the square root of 26 times i over 2. Go back to mode 1. 26 is not a reducible square root. There's not any pairs. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 4 over 2 minus the square root of 26i over 2. The first fraction I can reduce to negative 2. The second fraction you can't reduce a number outside a square root with a number under a square root because the square root is really like a 1 half power or a fraction exponent. Let me go back to mode 2 and check. Fraction, negative 4 minus square root 5 squared minus 51 over 2 times 1. Should get that exactly. And it looks exactly like that. If you want, you can give, and I wouldn't mind you at all, to try 33, especially if you feel like you need to practice. Try 33 and 35, and that's the end of the section. We're at 28 minutes, and I feel like the problems are pretty repetitive in, in this section, so I'm going to just make this a, a lovely one-part section, which is so rare for this semester.